Hi, today I'm going to show you how to do a really nice formal sort of look with your kimono. Now basically what you'll need to do this is two koshi himo, that is cotton straps that will tie around, and you want to make one of these. Now you, you get a rectangle of fabric basically and just sew some straps onto it and it should be long enough to tie around your body. Um, also, for your kimono today, I recommend either using um, an ear or tono saw there like the one I've got, or, and this, this is a big or, you could use a furi saw there, because I think a lot of people like furi saw their best, um, and so it, it could look really awesome. So basically what I've started out with is a base of um, a nice little dress. And I, I recommend going sleeveless for this look, just because it's an off-the-shoulder look. So we're going to start by getting this. Now this thing is basically going to give you an extra bit of formality. Well, not just formality, it'll, it'll just make it look better. And you tie it like so. And Basically, it, it's going to give you a nice trailing tail, which I call hikizuri. Well, everyone calls it hikizuri, really. And then from here, because I'm wearing a one-shoulder dress, I'm going to do the look one shoulder as well. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend wearing your kimono without something over your shoulders to protect it, like I usually do. But um, because this is, as I say, a form of look, you want to, um, to you know, look sexy a bit, I guess. And um, so you would wrap this around here like so. And this, this sleeve here is just going to hang down. And I'm going to hold it up so that my first koshi himo doesn't tie it down. And this just basically comes up under your bust. And this will give another layer to your hikizuri. And of course, the longer the kimono you use, the better. But as I've said, the, the tail you've got here is going to protect it. So don't worry. Now from here, what we're going to do is get another koshi himo. And this is basically going to help us just get a bit of leg. So we're going to arrange this like so. And I, I think if, if you have a long enough collar, you can probably wear a collar under this too, and that'll maybe give it a bit more heftiness. We'll tie the strap on, and then we'll arrange it a little better. But see, this is why I recommend choosing a short dress. Although, if you're a bit more of an adult rather than a young woman, um, yeah, a full length might be fair enough. But in any case, um, we're going to just arrange that nicely. And that's starting to look quite sexy to me. And as you walk around, of course, it's going to move. So, you know, however you arrange it, you know, bear that in mind. Um, now from here, you can either put a corset over all this. Hang on, make sure you get your sleeve out of there. Okay, um, so you either put a corset over this and just yeah, try and get your shoulder out. But I think that looks very nice, that shoulder look. And, um, or you can put your obi over it as per usual. I recommend that because you're going for an elongated look and also because you're going to be wearing this to presumably some sort of a party or something like that, you should, um, if you are going to go with the obi option, I recommend pulling up some of it to cover it, the um, koshi himo, because it, it, it can just look a bit funny. And you will find that because kimono don't usually sit this way, it'll be pretty easy for you to, to pull a fold out. Now, um, so th this is looking a bit more stylized, I suppose. But you put this over one shoulder, 
And you do the same basic thing as you do with any kimono, not really. Wrap it around twice. And um, then you do your standard Taiko Dome knot at the front with one important difference. Because this is not to be very dramatic, and let's face it, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you've gone with the geisha look, blah, blah, blah. You might as well go along with that. And um, I recommend from here, making sure your boob isn't coming out, and taking the long end and just pulling it out like so and putting your short end underneath it and of course you're going to flip this around to the back at the end but then you get your obi age and obi makura oh doesn't that red look nice and dramatic and you tie it there and since we're not using you know the darari da obi we can't really get exactly the geisha look, but we'll get something similar to it here. Tie it loose at the back and just turn it ever so gently going in this direction because this is the way your fold is going. Because if you turn it the other way, you're just going to destroy what you've achieved. And I just realized I put my sleeve in. So if, if you do this yourself, remember not to put your sleeve in. In fact, probably try and, and avoid the one shoulder look altogether. <laughs> Aren't I great? Um, so you do your standard obiage thing at the front here. And that's, that's we're, we're just going to leave that hanging because I think it looks more interesting that way. And I think it just works better with the outfit that way as well. And from here, we take our usual obijime and we'll just push it up under there just to try and, you know, push our knot up a little. And tie it like so, like we usually would. And tuck it at the side. And this is basically the look. And this is a bit more westernized, a bit more sexy, and you get a little bit of your underdress poking out depending on how you arrange it, but this is a great thing. You can arrange it how you want, you can show as much leg as you like, and yeah, basically this is the look. Let me know what you think, let me see what your variations are, and um, thanks for watching, see you next time.